Okay, in this problem, we have two forces. We have force one, which is equal to 80 pounds, and force two, which is equal to 60 pounds. These forces are separated by an angle of 120 degrees, and force two is completely along that x-axis. And we want to determine what the magnitude of our resultant force is and the direction that this resultant force makes with this positive x-axis right here. Now, in order to do this, we are going to create a parallelogram and we're going to use the parallelogram addition. So to create our parallelogram, the first thing we're going to do is, the first thing I do is I redraw what is given. So here I have, this is 60 degrees or 60 pounds. So that means the length of this vector is 60 and this force is 80 pounds, so that means the length of this vector is 80. Now, we're going to use vector addition. So if I go F1 plus F2, I'm going to get this right here. This is F2, so this is also a length of 60. I can go F2 plus F1, and when I do that, I finish my parallelogram. Now this has a length of 80. I also know this angle right here. So this angle right here is 120 degrees. Because I know this angle, I know this opposite angle. This is also 120 degrees. Remember, uh, in a parallelogram, the opposite interior angles, so this angle and this angle, are opposite interior angles, are equal to each other. And I can also put in my resultant. In a graphical sense, I'm going to put it from where the tails uh, bring the vectors apart to where the heads of the vectors come together. And I'm going to call that R for my resultant. The last thing I gotta do is figure out what this angle is. So this angle, let's call it gamma. And for the same reason I know the 120 degrees are the same, I know that this angle and this angle are going to be the same. They're opposite interior angles in a parallelogram. Now, how do I figure out what these are? The total angle of a parallelogram is going to be equal to 360 degrees. So if I add up all my interior angles, they need to add up to 360 degrees. So I'll have gamma, plus 120, plus gamma, plus 120. So that's all these interior angles, and they need to add up to 360. So I can say two gamma plus 240 is equal to 360. I can say two gamma is equal to 120, and I can say gamma is equal to 60 degrees. So that means each of these angles right here are 60 degrees. Now, if you add up all these angles, it will give you 360 degrees. It's a good way to check it if you're not sure. After I have my parallelogram and I figured out all my complete angles, I want to only draw half of it. So I'm gonna draw a triangle. And from this triangle, I can use trigonometry to determine the other sides that I can't find and the other angles that I can't find. So here, I'm going to have uh, a side length of 80. I'm going to have my side length of 60. And I'm going to have my resultant, which is what I'm looking for. Now I only know one angle in this case. I only know the 60 degrees. I don't know, don't be tempted to say, oh, this looks like it sort of goes through the middle of this. So this is 60 degrees on this side and this is 60 degrees on this side. Don't do that, it's not right. Uh, you, it's common, it's a common mistake, but please try not to do that. Uh, you know that this entire angle right here is 120 degrees. We know that entire angle is 120, but we don't know where this, this vector right here passes through that angle. So this angle right here, we'll call alpha, and that's unknown, in this angle right here, we'll call beta, and that's unknown. Uh, and we have this length right here of R. 
So how do we figure this out? Well, we have two laws in trigonometry called the law of sines and the law of cosines, and they relate the angles of triangles to the lengths of triangles. So if we review them real quickly, we're gonna have our law of sines, and we're going to have our law of cosines. And they work with triangles, so if I just draw a triangle and I have one side that's A, one side that's B, and one side is C, this opposite side of A is going to be alpha, this opposite side of B is going to be beta, and this opposite side of C is going to be gamma. Now law of sines is just going to be a ratio, so it's going to say that A over the sine of A, or sine of alpha, is equal to B over the sine of beta, which is equal to C over the sine of gamma. Now, it's important to make sure when you're doing these ratios that you have A, and alpha is going to be the angle that's across from A. Beta is going to be the angle that's across from B and gamma is going to be that angle that's across from C. So I have my law of sines, and I have the law of cosines. So what is the law of cosines? The law of cosines, if I, you can write it for any of the lengths. I'm just going to write it for side C. So C is going to be equal to, C squared is going to be equal to A squared plus B squared minus two AB times the cosine of gamma. And the cosine of the angle is going to be the angle across from the side that we're looking for. So we're looking for side C, and we're going to use the angle of the angle that's across from the side we're looking for. So in this case, it's gamma. We can do one more thing. Uh, we can get rid of that square. So in order to get rid of that square, we can take the square root. So this is gonna be equal to uh, the square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of alpha. So we have the law of sines, we have the law of cosines. How do we know which one to use? Well, it depends what's given in the problem. We want to use the law of sines first. If we're given all our angles, so three angles, in one side. We want to use the law of cosines first if we're given two sides in one angle. In this case, we're given two sides, 80 and 60, and we're given one angle, 60 degrees. If, uh, so we want to use the law of cosines. So let's substitute Let's substitute our numbers into this equation. And r is going to be c, 60 is going to be a, and 80 is going to be b. Now when we do this, we're going to get c, uh, r is equal to the square root of 60 squared plus 80 squared minus two times 60 times 80 times the cosine of 60. And this is all going to be under the square root. Now, this is where you have, this is another spot you have to be careful with. When you put this in your calculator, so when you put this in your calculator, you need to make sure that the mode of your calculator is in degrees. This 60 degrees right here is a degree. If you use radians, you will get the wrong answer. So you need to make sure your calculator is in degrees, and then you can put this uh, into your calculator. So 60 squared plus 80 squared minus two times 60 times 80 uh, times the cosine of 60. And then we're going to take the square root of this answer. 
and we get our resultant is 72.1. So the length of this side is equal to 72, uh, 72.1. R is equal to 72.1. So that's this part of what we're looking for. We determine the magnitude of our resultant uh, vector and this will be in pounds. Uh, now we need to def figure out the direction measured from the positive x-axis. So how do we do that? We need to figure out, what are we looking for? We're looking for the angle measured up like that. So if I can figure out what alpha is, let's call this theta, I can figure out what theta is. I know the total angle is 120 degrees, so theta is going to be equal to 120 degrees minus alpha. Now, how do I find alpha? Well, I can use the law of sines. Now I have these two, uh, I have um, this length, I have this length, and I need to figure out what this angle is. So I can use the law of sines. To use the law of sines, uh, what I'll have is A, so we'll have 60 over the sine of alpha is equal to 72.1 over the sine of 60. I can cross multiply now, so I'll get 60 times the sine of 60 is equal to 72.1 times the sine of alpha. And I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to sign, solve for alpha. So alpha is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 60 times the sine of 60 divided by 72.1. And that's going to get me whatever this angle right in here is. If I do that, I'll have 60 times the sine of 60 divided by 72.1 and I want to take the inverse sine of this number and this will give me 46.1 degrees so this right here is equal to 46.1 degrees so alpha right in here is 46.1 that means theta is going to be 120 minus 46.1. If I do that, 120 minus 46.1, I get uh, 120 minus 46.1, I get this is equal to 73.9 degrees. So 73.9 and that's my answer that says I'm 73.9 degrees up from the horizontal so what I would write is my resultant is equal to 72.1 pounds at 73.9 degrees measured up from my horizontal my positive x-axis, and that is my answer to this problem.